I'm running out of places to tell stories in my magical castle, of course. But today, the Folklore Thursday theme is animals. Oh, yes indeed. And I've got a story all about animals, which takes us all the way up to the most northerly point on the island of Britain itself. And it is the story of the Kingdom of Seals. And yes, I know you're an otter, but could you at least try and act? A bit, you know, you can do seal. I'm sure you've got a seal inside you somewhere. So, I want to tell this old, hoary, old uh, Scottish story for you. Um, and it's about seals, mainly. But um, you may have heard of werewolves. Let's start there. Don't be scared, it's not those kind of werewolves. But, you see, there was once a time when it seemed that folk could turn into almost any sort of animal that they fancied. I mean, you always had your werewolves, they came first. And then they, you had your bears, your cats, your swans, hedgehogs, eagles, lions, dragons, budges, you name it. Even in the story of Taliesin, which I told last week, he turns into a hare and uh, there's a sparrow involved and all sorts. And yes, yet the folk of Britain always seem to come back to just the same beasts. Horses or kelpies, and in the very far freezing north, there was the kingdom of the seals. <clears throat> Now, our story concerns a human, and the human in our story was not a terribly pleasant example of the animal. He was called Old Ben, and he was a fisherman far out on the crumbliest patch of coast off John O'Groats, as far north as you can run without drowning. Folk demanded their fish in those days, as they do today. You demand you like your fish, don't you? Of course you do. Folk demanded their fish, their herring, their herring, their mackerel for their slap-up kipper breakfasts. And old Ben had lived his old whole life sailing out on the choppy waters, collecting fish in his vast net. But what he also liked to do occasionally was to catch the odd chubby little grey seal, kill it, and slice off its oily pelt to sell in the market. Not a thought was given to the poor seal, seal's feelings when they were quite happy in their own skin. And old Ben always threw the rest of the poor animals down into the icy depths of the North Sea. Boo, say I. Anyway, one grey Thursday, a particularly glossy and fat seal was unfortunate enough to get tangled up in old Ben's net. And the next thing he knew, the poor animal was goggling up at the glinting steel of pointy myrtle, the fisherman's jagged, harpoon-like hunting knife, as sharp as sharp can be. <laughs> Keep still, you stupid little irregular! Old Ben shouted and plunged Pointy Myrtle deep into the seals behind. <laughs> the seal honked and howled so loudly it nearly deafened Old Ben, and with a wallop of a flipper to the chin, it, the fisherman was knocked back and the seal splashed into the sea and under the waves. Pointy Myrtle still jammed in his back end. Something like that, if you can imagine that. You don't need to be there. Anyway, old Ben was very annoyed to have lost his knife, but he had plenty more back home, and he wasn't going to lose any sleep over it. That night, what did keep him from sleep was a loud banging at the door of his smelly old cottage. Who can this be keeping an old fish up run from his well-deserved kip of a Thursday night? He wondered aloud to himself. He was a terribly boring old man. There, on old Ben's doorstep, was a dashing knight in oily armour, astride a glossy grey stallion. Old Ben McFishery, the impressive stranger boomed. If you call 63 old, then yes, that's me. Get on the horse. Why would I want to get on yon horse at this time of night with the rain whipping down like this? Old Ben demanded. It's a totally stupid idea that I'm going to go along with. With that, the old man climbed up behind the knight and they galloped away. This is how humans always behave around magical horse riders who come banging on their doors in the middle of the night. They're just so gullible, humans. Though lost in a haze, even old Ben could not deny a shuddering thump of terror in his weak little old heart as he realised that the horse 
was galloping at top speed right off the seafront, under the roaring waves and into the gloomy, enveloping cold of the North Sea. He was just beginning to build up the gumption to insist that he could not breathe under water when he suddenly realised that he could. He looked down, and in the place of gnarled old pink hands, gnarled old grey flippers were waving about in front of his face. And he could just make out where his bushy beard had once sprouted, long whiskers now splayed out. And he could not talk, but only honk. Oh! Something like that. The horse was the biggest seahorse you have ever seen, and her companion the knight was also a seal, and all he could do was honk as well. And yet, old Ben could understand the meaning of every single honk. Follow me, you old murderer, the seal ordered, and old Ben could do nothing but obey, swimming along in the wake of his kidnapper. Soon they arrived in a marvellously beautiful area of seabed, sculpted with coloured sands and impressive rocky towers, decorated with shells and pearls of all kinds. And in the centre, on a raised throne, lay a very poorly looking large seal. I mean, all seals are grey, but this seal was the greyest of all. And out of this seal's hind quarters, old Ben could make out the unmistakably ugly shape of Pointy Matawa. All around this ailing seal flapped other seals, each looking worried and crying, but none of them able to do anything about it. Be this, my murderer, croaked the large seal. It is your majesty, replied the seal who had brought old Ben. You see, old man, you stuck your knife into none other than the king of seals himself. And what a place to stick it, groaned the bleeding king. I'm sorry, I didn't know you were a king. What does it matter whether he was a king or not, replied the night seal. None of us seals have ever tried to kill you. We do not harm you, and we all deserve to keep our own skins. And what can I do? begged old Ben, knitting his front flippers together in anguish. Then one especially tall and serious looking seal replied, Only he who thrust pointy myrtle into the king's royal behind can retrieve it. Then we may be able to help his poor royal highness. Of course, of course I will, and I'll, I'll never do anything like it again stammered the old whiskery seal, and he flapped forward to pull Pointy Myrtle out of the King of Seals private area. He gripped with his teeth and tugged with his front flippers, and then with an almighty squelch, at last the knife was free. Ah! Oh, and the king gasped with relief, a loud bubbly gasp that grew louder and bubblier and bubblier until the old Ben Seal could see not a thing. And then, now look, bear with me, look, this is always a very disappointing end to a story, but it actually happened this way, so what can I do? It's just the way it happened. Anyway, old Ben woke up in his bed as the morning sun shone through his grimy windows. He was soaked from head to foot, and a quick taste told him that what soaked him was salty. Was it sweat from a nightmare or water from the sea? He was just beginning to think it was the first one when he felt something cold and jagged in his grip. It was Pointy Myrtle, that razor-sharp harpoon knife. Old Ben gazed at it, blood still visible on the blade, and he gulped with guilt. He took Pointy Myrtle and from that day forward used it for nothing except digging holes in his garden to plant geraniums. Never again did he kill or skin a seal, and indeed, he took everything he owned made from seals and mournfully buried it all in his garden. He even made sure every time he brought in his net bursting with fish to throw one or two back into the water for any seals he saw happily honking in the vicinity. He never stopped feeling guilty, but he hoped any time one of his seal friends caught one of the fish he threw back, that it was the king of seals himself, and that he was forgiven for his years of selfishness and greed. 
And any time old Ben saw someone else selling sealskins at the market, he made a point of telling them, Ah, everything needs its own skin. You let them keep theirs, and you keep your own. Mind how you go. The end. No need for a pointy model here. And well done, you made a very good seal. But uh, uh, I could do, do with a little uh, bit of uh, privacy now as I'm in, I'm in the bathroom. So uh, there'll be more stories to come. Do keep safe and do keep looking out for exciting tales of